Hello and welcome to today's session. We are going to take a quick look at what's cloud computing. It's basically delivery of any type of hosted services over internet. The list of hosted services keeps increasing rapidly and it ranges from basic stuffs like computing, storage, networks to advanced stuffs like analytics, clusters, caching and more. We actually use cloud computing every day without even realizing that we are using it. Let's see a few daily used applications which utilizes cloud. As you all know, Netflix is mainly used for online streaming of videos. They use AWS for computing and storage needs. Microsoft Office uses Azure Active Directory to manage the users behind the scenes. Amazon Alexa's voice service uses cloud. One of the most used email services, Gmail, uses cloud for storage. And no big surprise, most of the social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram uses cloud as well. Again, Google Drive uses cloud for storage. Last of the few listed here, Spotify uses cloud again. So most of you listening to this at least would have used one of these applications so far. I believe you could start relating more to cloud from now on. Why is this massive shift from traditional data centers to cloud? It's because of the super cool features that cloud computing offers us. The first key advantage is the pricing model. You pay only for what you use. Using cloud increases the reliability of the data by replicating the data and storing it in multiple redundant sites, which makes data backup and disaster recovery much easier. Creating cloud computing resources is a matter of minutes now. Giving more flexibility to businesses, you no longer have to manage all the data centers which you used to do in traditional data center approach. With cloud, you can expand to new geographic regions and deploy globally in minutes. Most of the cloud providers have infrastructure all over the world, which enables you to deploy applications more closer to your customer, decreasing the latency. Elasticity. Let me give an example to explain this. Imagine you're running a website and have a sudden crash 50% sale on your website, which increases the load drastically. In traditional data center approach, you need to provision all the capacity you need beforehand and have it up and running all the time, which costs more money. Instead, when using cloud, you can just scale up the number of servers that particular time period and go back to normal once the sale ends. Next, let's see a few types of cloud service offerings. It's mainly categorized into three, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. Infrastructure as a service is basic building blocks like networking, computing, storage. Platform as a service is one layer on top of it. It is mainly the operating system, patching, disaster recovery, backup, and more. Software as a service is providing the application itself as a service, like web-based email service. There are many more new offerings in the list being added every day. Analytics as a service, monitoring as a service, security as a service. Hope you get the idea. There are three types of cloud itself. Public cloud is managing your servers and storage over internet in a public network. Whereas in private cloud, the servers and infrastructure are maintained in a private network exclusive to the single organization. And finally, hybrid cloud is a mix of both and offers more flexibility. Now let's see how cloud computing works. The cloud providers are the center of attraction here. They own and maintain the network connected hardware required for the application services, while you provision and use what you need via a web application. They typically charge for what cloud computing services based on the usage. However, as a customer, you have certain responsibilities to manage and access the cloud to secure and manage the applications on the cloud. Simply put, the cloud provider is responsible for the security of the cloud and the customer is responsible for the security in the cloud, which is called the shared responsibility model. These are the few top cloud providers in the market today. We'll see them in detail in the coming sessions. Every technology has at least some downsides and it all depends on how we use it. Same applies to cloud computing. The first key concern is the security and privacy in public cloud. Even though the cloud providers provide a wide range of features to secure your cloud estate, it's the customer's responsibility to use it wisely. 
For instance, making an S3 bucket containing sensitive data public is a huge risk. There is always a dependency on internet as you need it to access the data in the cloud. Even though we claim that cloud computing results in huge cost savings, it is only possible if we use it in the right way by deleting the unwanted resources, by turning down the VMs when not in use, and by following many more best practices. When migrating data from on-premise to cloud, all the features in the on-premise environment may not be available in all the cloud providers. So it's very important to choose the cloud provider wisely. As you no longer have the control to the data centers, in case of any technical issue with cloud providers itself, all you could do is raise a support ticket and wait for it to get resolved. We are at the end of this session, so let's do a quick recap of what we learned today. Cloud computing is the delivery of hosted services over the internet. It has many advantages like cost savings, increases reliability, more speed and agility, no need to worry about the capacity anymore, and also provide global presence. It is managed by cloud providers as well as the customers. However, there are few potential risks around security, dependency, cost, and finding the right provider, but these can be easily overcome by mastering the cloud. If you have any questions in this session, please leave them in the comments below. In the next session, we'll learn more about cloud providers and the generic cloud components.